Hello. In the last lecture, we just have gone till uh, question number 11. Let us continue now from question number 12. Hmm. Oh, this looks to be a question on scatter gather. It is saying in the execution of scatter gather, flow one route completes in 10 seconds and flow to route completes in 20 seconds. How many seconds does it take for scatter gather to complete? As you know, in scatter gather, what happens? The main thread, whatever is executing scatter gather, it will start two more threads or it will fork two more threads because there are two rounds. And the main thread will wait until these two threads join. So first thread is taking 10 seconds and concurrently second thread is taking 20 seconds. So the main thread will wait until 20 seconds. So scatter gather will take 20 seconds to complete. So the control will come to the next component after 20 seconds only. So answer C is the right answer. Good. Now 13. This is related to database. Okay, what is it saying? The database select operation returns five rows from the database. Okay. It will return five rows. That means payload after database select will be an array, right? Size of the array is five. OK. What is logged by the logger component? OK, after database select, there is logger. Here in the logger, they are using type of payload. What is type of payload after database select? Array, right? Very simple question, array. OK, fine. Now question number 14. <laughs> Uh, utility.dwl file is located in src main resources modules folder. The utility.dwl defines a function called pascalize that reformats strings to pascal. What is the correct data view to call pascal function? Okay. Import. Okay. See, whenever you are importing, you have to use colon colon. So this is wrong syntax. B, OK, import. OK, they are, we are not using import star from. This import is correct, but when you are not using import star from, you have to use utility colon colon. So B is not correct. C, mm, this import is correct because it is using colon colon. And as we are not using star, it should be the module name utility colon. So C is a correct option. D is not correct because again they are using dot. So option C is the right answer. OK, this is correct. OK, a question number 15. A mule flow has three set variable transformers. What global data structure can be used to access variables? To access variables, what we use vars dot. Uh, it is not attributes. It is not the message. It is not application properties. We can use the mule event itself. Inside the mule event, I hope you remember. Inside the mule event, there will be vars. So first option says attributes of mule event. No. Second option says message of mule event. No, not the application property. So D is the right answer. OK, um, question number 16. Mm, refer to the exhibit. Mule application has an HTTP request that is configured with hard coded values. OK. To change this Mule application is configured using a properties file named config.yaml. OK, what is a valid expression? OK, so it is dollar, not hash. Whenever you are using properties, it is dollar training.host. Oh, both A and B look same. Is there any difference? Oh, there is colon. No, it is dot. Actually, dollar curly brackets training dot post. So this is the right answer. Yeah. Number 17. OK, what is it saying? Refer to the exhibit. Good. 
to create an order object. What is the correct data view code for set payload transformer to in the create order flow to use add item subflow to add a route router cable with the price of 100. Hmm. So the concept here is asking about um, how to from set to payload you have to call this flow. Hmm. How do you call a flow within data view? It is lookup function, right? Lookup. What is the syntax of lookup function? What is the syntax of lookup function in data wave? The flow name, first argument is a flow name, comma, whatever payload you want to pass. It can be anything, whatever payload you want to pass is second argument. So lookup is a function that is used to call the flow. Data wave. Has to call this flow. So lookup. B and C are using lookup. I think there is a spelling mistake here. Lookup. I think this is a bracket. Both of them is having bracket. Function. Sorry, the flow name add item. That's fine. Second one is a payload. Hey, in payload, you don't need to write a payload colon again. Right. You don't need to write payload colon again. You can directly write the object. So D looks to be good. Um, first argument is the flow name. Here there is a spelling mistake. It is not double quote. It is parenthesis. Look up. Spelling mistake. Actually look up of add item comma. This is the end. Type object. No need of payload colon. That is a difference. So here they have given option B. No need, no need of using payload colon. Option D is the right answer. Question number 18. OK, a flow needs to combine and return data from two different data sources. OK, it contains a database select operation followed by HTTP request operation. What method? What is the method to capture both payloads so that payload from second request does not override that from the first? OK, let me explain you. This is interesting. So a flow has multiple components. One of the component is actually making a call to a database and another one is uh, making a request HTTP request. Normally, let's assume that there is HTTP listener. If a request is coming, assume that payload before this database component is X. But after firing a query on database, assume that we are getting the payload as Y. What will be the payload to request component Y? Now the request component is making a HTTP request to some other, some other API. It is getting the response. Assume that response from here is Z, Z. OK, what will be the payload to the next component? Z, right? That means the output of this database component is lost. Hmm. So the response from the request will be available to next component. In next component, what I might want to do is I might want to use both Y as well as Z. So I don't want to lose Y. That is what the question is saying. Pause the video and see this question correctly again. What it's saying a flow and return data from two sources. So from this first source, it is getting Y. Second source, it is getting Z. So we need to combine. It contains database select operation followed by HTTP request. What is the method to capture both the payloads so that the payload from the second request does not override the one from the first? 
the actually the, I will tell you the solution. What we need to do is we need to store the output of database select in a variable. I hope you remember the enrichment, whatever I discussed in my training lectures. Message enrichment. What? Every component has a target variable. If you click on database select under advanced tab, there will be target variable. If you set the target variable, what will happen? The output of database component will be stored in a variable and the payload is not overwritten. So what will happen if I actually set a target variable for database component? The payload X before database component will become the input payload to request. So the output of this database component database select will be stored in a target variable. And then when this is making a request, we are getting the response as Z. That is available as a payload. So the next component can actually use this variable to get the output of database and it can directly access the payload of request. So the solution is to set target variable. So here, first option says put database select inside a cache scope. No, put database select inside a message enricher scope. Actually, message enricher scope is not available in Mule 4. It is available in Mule 3, actually, if you are coming from Mule 3 background. So this is not correct. C says nothing. Previous payloads are always combined. No, this does not happen. D says save the payload from database select to a variable. So answer D, A. D is the right answer. OK. So question number 19. A mule project contains MySQL database dependency. The project is exported from any point studio, so it can be deployed to Cloud Hub. OK, what export options create smallest deployable archive that is that will successfully deploy to Cloud Hub? OK, so when you are exporting to deploy it on Cloud Hub. You need only the project modules. And dependencies, why do you need source? B is not. Uh, B is the right answer. You don't need to attach project sources. Only include project modules and dependencies. That will be sufficient. So B is the right answer. Okay. So question number 20. This is very interesting. Database on table row retrieves data from customer table that contains a primary key column and an increasing see this point increasing is very important increasing some date column date time column neither column allows duplicate values how should this on table row listener be configured so that it retrieves each row at a time remember here they said user id is a primary key column so they are not saying that primary key column is incremental for actually on table row, you know, internally it uses watermarking, right? We need to give a watermarking column, which will be in incremental, right? So um, this date time column is incremental, they have sent, right? So here they're asking, how should the listener be? set listener be configured so it retrieves each row at most one time so what incremental column remember incremental column has to be set as watermark column it is saying set the watermark column to the date time column correct second one is saying set the target value the last retrieved data no target value Set watermark column to user ID column. So many people get confused between A and D. Remember, user ID is a primary key, but they didn't mention that it is incremental. 
all primary keys need not be incremental, right? So that's the thing. So whatever is incremental column, that only we need to set as watermark column. Remember this, uh, there will be definitely a question related to watermarking, and this is the concept. Remember, incremental. Only a column which is continuously incremental that should be set as watermark column. So option A is the right answer. Fine. Question number 21. An on table row listener retrieves data from table that contains record underscore ID and increasing numerical column. How should the uh, listener be configured so that it retrieves new rows at most one time? So same thing, right? So incremental column means record ID. Set the watermark column to record underscore ID. So it is almost the same question, but in a different way. OK. Question number 22 is related to a syntax of data view. Let us try to see this. A function named new prod code needs to be defined that accepts two input parameters, an integer value for item ID, a string value for product category, and returns a new product code. What is the correct data view code to define this function? So remember in data view, if you don't remember the syntax of data view, go and watch my data view related videos in my mule in-depth training playlist. Okay. So what is the syntax to define a function? Fun is a keyword. Yes. So can we straight away eliminate C? It is using function. So we will eliminate C. Now let us see. Fun function name. Hey, is this curly bracket? No, it should be normal bracket, right? See this curly bracket. So this is not correct. A is not correct because it should be normal parenthesis. Then second one. Hmm, and also in A, they're using arrow. Whenever you are using function, whenever you are using fun keyword, it should be equals. So this is also not correct. So A is not right option. B looks to be correct. Fun, function name, argument types is equals to this looks to be correct. So B is looking to be correct. C is anyway wrong because they are using function. And what about Third one, where? Oh, they are using where definition, but it is looking like a function. So it's D is also not correct. So answer B. B is the right answer. Good. Now let us go to question number 23. A web client submits a request and web service consumer throws this error. What is the next step to fix this error? What is the error? Bad request. Bad request means input data might not be in a correct format, right? So here this is throwing bad request. So the input data might not be correct. But what should be the next step? Set a header to consume operation equal to destination query parameter. Destination is a query parameter. No. It is about the payload. Here uh, B says set SOAP payload before consume operation that contains destination query parameter. So bad request means payload is not in a correct format. So option is to set payload properly. Right. Option C says set a property uh, to the consume operation equal to it is not about property. Payload is wrong. Bad request means payload is not in a correct format. And D is set a JSON payload. For SOAP web service, it's always XML. So B is the right answer among all. Good. Question number 24 is related to error handling. Let us see what is it saying. There is validation component, try scope. Hmm. The validation component in Triscope throws an error. What response is returned to the client in the main flow? The validation comp. Okay, same thing, right? So what is returned here throws an error. 
this is on error propagate so it will propagate here it is on error continue this set payload will set to error main flow as it is on error continue http listener will actually give success code with whatever is a payload so error main flow is the right answer so if you to understand the concept of error handling various scenarios you will be able to answer these type of questions correctly if your concepts are not clear i i will highly recommend you to go to my error handling video in the mule developer course and see it okay lastly for this video uh, we'll see this as last question 25 what is the response to web client here get request is coming set period setting as before is null if it is null then this is throw an error is null payload it is not null because we are setting it as before so the control will come to set payload payload is set as after so we'll get offer after so response will be after so this is actually a very simple question, but maybe they are trying to confuse us. We will normally think, how can an answer be so simple? Right? So that is the thing. Actually, this will check if the period is null. It is not null. So after option A is the right answer. See, somebody they have given validation error as right answer. This is wrong. So that is the reason I'm saying in this PDF, there are a lot of wrong answers. OK, so we have seen until question number 25. In next lecture, we start from question number 16. See you next lecture.